Hi guys, I'm Bobsy, and in this video we're looking at a lot of the changes that's been made over the past month to our game. But first, what game are we making? This game is a fusion between a survival game and a colony simulation. The twist is that you play as an integrated part of the colony, but you also have to manage it at the same time. The game takes place in a medieval setting, with only tools that can be crafted from the resources around you. As you progress, you will be able to build a house. This will later turn into a thriving village with NPCs who participate in the daily life of the village, helping you out on tedious tasks. These villagers think for themselves, take care of themselves and go on about their daily lives. You are to provide the necessary infrastructure for your own town to thrive. However, to be able to have all of these cool features with NPCs with their own AI, custom generated islands, thriving economies and much more, we need the basics down. There are a lot of basics in game development and this is the focus on this video. But first of all, we now have hands. So Sniffle with my partner in crime has added and animated these which looks good for now. These hands are most likely just our placeholders for now but it really adds a lot. We can now equip tools in our hands and actually start chopping away at different resources scattered around the maps. This hitting animation is also very basic and homemade and it's just a placeholder for now. But already with first person hands and tools there's so much more feel to the game. We've made it easy to add new resources, we can tweak how different materials drop from the resources. This will be very useful when we want to add for example bark to the trees, different rare minerals to stone such as gold or something like that. And I must say I really like how this works. This is controlled by a rarity drop system which takes the other materials drop chances into account as well. Which means that the rarity is always relative to each other. I really like how this worked out and it means that we can much better control the rarity of well, the drops. And because of this modular system it's super easy for us to add more. So to show you how easy it is for me to add a new resource I decided to add Batman's parents into the game. And now just like Batman's parents, they're gone. If you watched the previous video about generating the island you will know that I made a fully procedural island generator. This also includes the spawning of trees. I've now tweaked this so we can control the spawning of all resources and just like the resource material rarity is relative to one another, the same principle is also applied to the resources spawning on the islands. And we're now at the point in the video where I have to tell you that I'm really disappointed in you. You haven't even liked the video yet. So the screen's now black and you're gonna have to look at your own reflection in shame. Right, okay, let's, let's get back to it, I love you. So, there's also news about the grass. So in the video about generating the world, I got into generating the grass using a method called GPU instancing. Even though I'm still fairly proud of that work, I just knew that compute shaders could do a great job as well. I just didn't have the time for it. But luckily, I didn't need to. Another YouTuber called Minions Art has built an awesome grass compute shader with blending, and I think it looks amazing. The link is in the description. The issue was that this was built for a painting tool. This tool works super well, however, this is not what I need for a world that's, well, you know, generated. I can't hand paint it. So I had to deep dive into another person's code, which I really don't like doing, by the way, to figure out a way for me to spawn it myself. After about two to three hours of work, I got it working and I must say I'm pretty happy about the result. But have a look for yourself. We've also added storage chests that work well over the network now. Networking this was a bigger challenge than I'd like to admit, but the player inventory is technically stored locally, so we needed a good way of transferring this via the network. And transferring custom classes over the network is not optimal, nor is it very easy to do. But I found a good workaround, so now everything works as expected. You can now add and remove stuff from the inventory chests, uh, and all of this is sent from the server to the player. So when they open the chests, they get the update. And since some people seem to be very interested in this for some reason, yes, these chests are server authoritative. So Snifflewith has also been hard at work on the user interface, and he has really done a great job with the UI. Everything is now responsive using the new UI toolkit from Unity. 
So all the UI that you see on screen is done by him. He also added proper inventory item icons and descriptions, so everything is working nicely there. Pretty much every functionality that I code that needs to interact with the UI, he's the one building it. Some of the next stuff in the pipeline and stuff he also gotta build UI to is something like crafting, cooking, controlling the NPCs and so on. So remember to leave a thanks to Sniffle for his hard work on the UI. I couldn't have done it without his help. Another fun thing that Sir Snifflewiff also made was a little detail using animation rigging. The NPCs now look at the player and look at each other, which makes them feel way more alive. I found this to be a fun addition, um, but honestly it's, it's a great improvement to the overall feel of the NPCs. They now feel way more alive, whereas before they felt a bit stiff and robotic. I can't wait to work more on the NPCs and make a deep diving video into how their brains work. I just know you guys will love it. We also have a super awesome guy named Joran on the team who wants to get into 3D mod. We want to keep the poly style of the game, so I'm excited to see what he can do. We just simply want to make it our own and stray away from using these synthy assets, even though I do think they look great. I'm also currently working hard on a PS warning system so that boats can come and go from the island with NPCs on them. These boats could hold visitors, traders, or maybe even enemies. But this is gonna have to wait for another video. And lastly, this video is completely edited by one of my really good friends, Plasma. So please let us know what you think of his work in the comments, as well as letting us know what you think of the progress of the game so far. Reading the comments is always such a big pleasure. And make sure you also say hi to Sir Sniffle with Plasma and Joran in the comments. And as always, I just hope that you have a wonderful day.